Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the flow around an airfoil from a uh, panel method standpoint. And so from the previous video, which is the building more complex flows video, we did a couple things. First, we created an airfoil shape that's approximated by flat panels. And then second, we found an expression for the velocity potential, phi, uh, induced at an arbitrary point P in the flow field due to both uniform flow and all of the source panels. And that's the expression you see here. So phi P is equal to the uniform flow contribution and the source panel contribution. Uh, recall that the lambda j or the source panel strengths uh, is outside of the integral and that's because these strengths are constant on each panel but can vary from panel to panel. And based on the definition of the velocity potential we can find velocity components by taking appropriate derivatives of uh, phi p. So here we can see that the x component of velocity uh, is equal to the partial derivative of phi p with respect to x and the y component of velocity is the partial derivative of phi p with respect to y. So the goal is to solve for the values of lambda j, the source panel strengths, such that the flow around the airfoil is physical or correct. And the question is how do we ensure that that flow is actually physical? Let's just try to assign random values for each panel source strength lambda j. And I can show you this in my actual source panel method code where I assigned random values to these lambda j's. So this is the result from using just random lambda j's uh, for all of the source strengths on all the panels. You can see the airfoil in black right here. It's a little hard to see right now before I zoom in, but the streamlines are in blue and the velocity vectors at each solved grid point are red. So if I zoom in though, you can, you can see that uh, the streamlines are going through the airfoil and they're coming back out again. Uh, and if you zoom in sort of close to where they come through the airfoil, you can see that the velocity vectors are pointing into the airfoil or also over here, uh, they're pointing out of the airfoil. And so this is clearly not a physical solution. And this now is just showing the contrast of what it should actually look like, where there's no flow going into or out of the airfoil. All the streamlines flow around the airfoil. So from the results from that simulation with random uh, lambda j values, you saw something that looked like this, where the streamlines uh, are going through the actual airfoil, and that's not good. You can't have uh, flow passing through a solid object, and this is ignoring uh, suction or blowing. The correct solution will look something like this, where you have the streamlines passing smoothly around the airfoil, uh, and essentially just parallel to the airfoil body. To get a physical solution, let's think about how the flow interacts with the airfoil or any object in general. The first point here is that the flow cannot pass through the airfoil. Another way of saying this is that the normal velocity at the panel is equal to zero, which we can write mathematically as the velocity vector dotted with the panel normal vector is equal to zero. The second point is that the flow uh, goes tangent to the airfoil surface, which we can also say as the tangential velocity at the panel is finite. And it's finite since the flow is inviscid. And mathematically, we can write this as the velocity vector dotted with the tangential vector is equal to some number. So here are just a few notes based off of the previous whiteboard. So first, if the normal velocity were not equal to zero, then flow could pass through the airfoil, which we said was not good for a solid object unless you have suction or blowing, which we don't. Uh, number two here is that for viscous flow, in general, you have the no slip condition at the wall, uh, which means that you have uh, no velocity at the wall for the flow, but for inviscid flow, the velocity at the wall is finite, and we have inviscid flow. Number three here is that the normal flow condition from the previous whiteboard is used to solve for the panel source strengths. We don't need the tangential condition to solve for the panel source strengths. Uh, however, Number four here, the tangential flow condition uh, is used to solve for the panel flow velocities because the uh, normal velocity is zero so that the tangential flow velocity is the velocity at the uh, panel and thus we can solve for the pressure distribution from the tangential flow condition. So I've rewritten the velocity potential equation that we're gonna be solving for, again up here, that was from the first whiteboard. And so in this equation, the knowns are shown here. So first is the free stream velocity, the infinity, which comes into play in the uniform flow uh, solution here. Uh, the angle of attack, alpha, which again is from the uniform flow. And the geometry, we set the geometry of the airfoil or the point that we're solving for. And so we know RPJ in here. So we know everything in this integral. The only unknown then, or the only unknowns, are the panel source strengths, lambda J. Uh, and that this means that we will have N unknowns 
uh, so one source strength per panel, uh, which means that we will need to have n equations. So in the previous video, the building complex flows video, we kept solving for the velocity potential phi at an arbitrary point p in the flow field. So here's our airfoil, and here's that arbitrary point p that we were solving for. Instead of solving at point p now, let's solve at the control points of the panels. So here's the panel, and here are the two boundary points, and in the center, is the control point. And so this then results in the velocity potential uh, at the panel surface, phi i instead of phi p. Uh, and then we can just take that normal derivative to get the normal velocity component at the control point, which is the airfoil surface effectively. And then we set that expression equal to zero based off of the discussion on the previous whiteboards. So first we're going to write the velocity potential equation at panel i instead of uh, point P. So we have phi i is equal to the same uniform flow. And then here, the only thing that's changed is that the uh, this variable here is now r i j instead of r p j. And note that this one equation for phi i, this equation, includes every single uh, uh, source panel strength because of this summation. So to solve for the normal or tangential velocities at point i, we just take the appropriate derivatives of the velocity potential equation up here with respect to uh, either the normal or the tangential. So for the normal velocity at point i, which is again the control point of that particular panel, we have the partial derivative of phi i with respect to n i. And here, because v infinity and alpha are constant, we just have v infinity cosine alpha d x i d n i plus v infinity sine alpha d y i d n i. And then in here, because these are constants as well over the particular panel, we just have the uh, partial derivative of the term inside of the integral with respect to n i. Uh, and again, this whole equation here is equal to zero because the normal velocity at the control point is equal to zero. And then for the tangential, we have a very similar expression, almost the exact same thing, except for replacing all of the dni's now with dti's for the tangential. Now, note that the i and j subscripts are extremely important and they can super trip you up. So make sure that when you're writing out these equations, if you're doing it yourself, make sure to make it very clear which one's an i, which one's a j. Now for the rest of this video, we'll be focusing actually just on the uniform flow terms to evaluate what these partial derivatives are. And the next video is focusing on this integral, which is a lot more detailed than it might look. So in the rest of this video, we're focusing on these four partial derivatives from the free stream term in the velocity potential equation, uh, because we can't uh, just code up a partial derivative like this. We need some expression for it in terms of variables that we already have. And so I'm going to say that we would like these partial derivatives now uh, in terms of beta i, and that's mainly because we've already solved for beta i from our panel method geometry section. So see that panel method geometry uh, video that I've posted. And so just to recap that video, here I have a schematic of a single panel, panel i, and that's the line. We have the two boundary points here, and since I'm using i and j for the panels and the equation, I'm just going to say this is point k, this next one is point k plus 1, so the, it's going around in this direction, so the normal points out, and this is the normal for the ith panel. Uh, we have the free stream velocity vector, v infinity here, and the angle it makes with the x-axis is alpha, or the angle of attack. Uh, and then beta i, that angle is defined as the angle between the free stream velocity vector and the panel outward normal. So that's this, so between this and this. And so that is beta i, and this is also actually beta i. And so essentially we're just trying to find the normal or tangential velocity due to the free stream flow for this particular panel. And you can see that we can simply write this as the uh, normal velocity uh, on panel i due to the free stream, right, would just be this v infinity times the cosine of beta i. And we can also say similarly for the tangential, it's just v infinity times the sine of beta i. And we could be done uh, with that. However, for completeness and because I like to go through full derivations, I'm going to start from these partial derivatives and show you through all the math that we do end up back with these particular expressions anyway. So let's start with the normal derivatives first. Here we have the expression for the normal velocity component on the ith panel due just to the uniform flow, and that's given here. Uh, over here now I have the uh, redrawn that panel schematic. So this is panel i again. We're going from k to point k plus 1, which means we're going around this way, which means the outward normal is pointing this way. That's n i. And then again, I've drawn the free stream velocity vector v infinity at an angle of attack alpha from the positive x-axis. And we can break this up into components. So we have vx and vy. And we can see that the v infinity cosine alpha up here and the v infinity sine alpha 
from up here are just the x and y velocity components of that free stream velocity vector. So you can recall from my panel method geometry video, which you should go back and watch if you haven't already, that delta i is just the angle between the positive x-axis and the panel normal. Uh, and so you can see that this here kind of makes a triangle, right? And that's what I'm blowing up down here. I'm just doing the x down for the y. This is the normal. And so that, that angle in here is the same as this, so that's delta i. And then we have uh, dxi, so a differential movement in the x direction, dyi, differential movement in the y direction, dni, differential movement in the normal direction. And so based off of uh, you know trigonometry here, we can say that the cosine of delta i is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse gives us dxi, dni. And then sine of delta i is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or dyi over dni. I've just rewritten those expressions here at the top of the whiteboard from the previous whiteboard, and uh, we want this in terms of beta i, not delta i, as it is right now. And note that you can keep it in terms of delta i because we do solve for that in the panel method geometry, but in order to simplify these expressions down, I'm going to put it in terms of beta i. So from the panel method geometry video, we have that beta i is equal to delta i minus alpha. So we can rearrange that to say delta i is equal to beta i plus alpha. And if we plug this into the normal velocity equation from a bunch of whiteboards ago, we have that equation here is equal to v infinity cosine alpha. Remember, that's the x component of the uh, free stream velocity. And then here we have cosine beta i plus alpha, because we're plugging in for this expression. And we have here, which is just the y component of the free stream velocity, plugging in this from up here, because it's from this partial derivative. And we're just going to use the trigonometric identity that cosine of a plus or minus b is equal to cosine a cosine b minus or plus sine a sine b. In this case, we have a plus. So we have a plus, which means we're going to have cosine a minus b. And so uh, I'm gonna, just going to say that a is equal to beta i plus alpha, and b is equal to alpha. You can switch these around, but it ends up not mattering because cosine is an even function. Uh, and the final result then, uh, if you replace this here with just cosine of a minus b is v infinity. It's the same from both. I just factored it out. And we have cosine of a minus b. You can see it's beta i plus alpha minus alpha just gives us beta i. And we get the expression that we saw from before a couple whiteboards ago that I said was the simplified way that you could do it. We get the same result, which is good, of v infinity cosine of beta i. Now for completeness sake, we're just going to do the tangential uh, component as well. Very similar, it's slightly different, but uh, just for completeness I'm going to do it. And so we can note that the normal vector is always 90 degrees greater than the tangential vector. So I've redrawn that panel here. So this is panel i again. I've just kind of turned it and reoriented it so it's more convenient to look at. So we have point k here, point k plus 1 here, and that means that the normal is now up here in quadrant 1. So that's and i, and because the normal vector is always 90 degrees greater than the tangential vector, that means the tangential vector lags behind by 90 degrees, so that's ti, which is along the panel, it's tangent to the panel. So again, you can see here we have kind of a triangle, and that's what I've drawn up here, and this angle is going to be delta i minus 90, and you can see that this is sort of the uh, differential movement along the x-axis, differential movement along the y-axis, differential movement along the tangential vector, and so we can just use trigonometry again to get cosine of delta i minus 90 adjacent over hypotenuse dxi dti sine of delta i minus 90 opposite over hypotenuse dyi dti and now because we have a little bit more complicated term inside of these cosines and sines we're going to use the following two trig identities which is cosine of theta plus or minus 90 is equal to minus or plus sine theta and sine of theta plus or minus 90 is equal to plus or minus cosine theta so i'm going to write down the dxi dti derivative here again it's cosine delta i minus 90 so cosine delta i minus and since the minus is down here we're going to have a plus so we get plus sine delta i and then for this one dy i dt i we have sine of delta i minus 90 minus is down here so we have a minus so it equals minus cosine delta i now again we want the angles in terms of beta i and not delta i so we're going to convert using this equation again, which, can, which we can write as delta i is equal to beta i plus alpha. And then we'll plug this into the tangential velocity equation. So vt for panel i from the uniform flow is equal to this, which was the x component of the free stream velocity, 
times the uh, dxi dti and then the y component of the free stream velocity dyi dti and I'm just going to rewrite this equation again but just pull the negative out here and so we can use the following trigonometric identity sine of a plus or minus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus or minus cosine a sine b and in this case the order is important and so you can see that from up here we have sine a, that's the first term, so that's a is going to be beta i plus alpha and b is going to be alpha and so we have we actually have sine of, since there's a negative here and the negatives in the bottom, we're going to have sine of a minus b and so we can write the final result here as v infinity times sine of beta i plus alpha, so that's a minus b and alpha minus alpha is zero, so we get the final result that's the same as before uh, which is vt i u is equal to v infinity sine of beta i. And so finally, we just take what we derived and write the normal and tangential velocity components for the panel i at the control point of panel i as follows. And you can see that all we've done in this entire video is essentially just take the uniform flow, that big term with the two partial derivatives, and replace it with a simplified term uh, that's in terms of a constant value, v infinity, that we know, and a variable based off of the panel geometry, which we also know. Now, even though we've gotten rid of those partial derivatives, you can still see we have this partial derivative term, and it's inside of an integral, uh, and this is not as easy as what we just did. However, the next video will go through in detail how to solve for this integral term. It's not trivial, there's a lot of math, but it all makes sense. Uh, and if you follow along, you should be able to, to figure out exactly where all the terms come from in the panel method equations. Thanks for sticking around, and thanks for watching.